Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm sorry that I haven't been releasing any content for the past month or so. I've been on vacation, I was in the process of moving to my new home. But since I'm back, I've been getting a lot of questions about mage builds. And I promised to release a video before the end of this week. So, let's get right into it. So with Unchained being right around the corner, this video will apply for both Legacy and Unchained. Since both clients are getting the same patch at the same time, know that your experiences may vary. So I'll take this video with a grain of salt. So starting off with number one consideration. Understand the population of your server. What I mean is, understand your enemy's faction's DPS. Are they heavy in melees, archers, or mages? For whatever kind of DPS you think might be able to kill you with ease, geared towards defending that kind of damage. If there's an equal balance of DPS, then at that point, it's really up to you on what you want to play. Here's a quick overview for the different types of armor buffs. Starting off with Cloth. Cloth gives you a 20% off of all debuffs, about a 7 to 8% skill damage at eternal, negative uh, 10% mana consumption, and this is going on at 6.0 patch. It has a high magic defense with a very low physical defense. And now with leather, it gives you a negative 20% um, decrease in trip duration, about 3% more skill damage over cloth, has equal magic and physical defenses. And lastly, plate. Now plate gives you a negative 20% for snare and stun duration. Um, it has the lowest skill damage of all types of armor and a plus 10% mana consumption but it also has a high physical defense but very low magic defense. Um, later on they're going to change where instead of physical defense getting 110% it's going to give that 10% to magic defense and this is all based off the base stats on your armor. So I've been third crafting a lot lately and if you're really interested you can go to my discord and look it up under lots of info now number two know your place it's important to understand that there isn't a one build fits all build some builds are good for 1v1s but suck in large scale and vice versa think about what you want to do in arc age do you want to dominate in duels and arenas do you want to fight small skirmishes with your friends or guild or do you want to become a content player? Personally, I play a glass cannon DPS mage in big raids with about 50 plus players in a setting. Although I can dish out crazy amount of DPS, I also understand that I'm too squishy for many 1v1 situations. My role in raids are just to free cast from the back and pick people off with a small group. I understand my role and I try not to stray too far away from it. So that's why you don't see me do a lot of 1v1s. Number 3. Scepter or Staff. Now, the Willing Scepter gives you a weapon buff of 177 attack speed. You'll have a larger stat pool over Staff, but a lower raw DPS number. Whereas Staff is the complete opposite. It has a higher DPS number and a lower stat pool. But the Staff buff gives you a plus 3 meter range over your dual counterparts, a plus 5% scale damage increase, and a negative 7% decreased cast time. Now knowing all this, it's going to lead straight into the next consideration. Number 4. Gems, Sorcery, and Maldiction. So the weapons, gems, and class you play should ultimately decide what you should gear for. Now understand that there's going to be a lot of changes in 6.0. One of them being sorcery's damage from instant casting abilities. It's getting nerfed in place of a stronger damage from casting abilities. Now, Maldiction scales really well off of attack speed, right? So, for example, popping your Serpent's Glare and shooting out AoE red laser beams. The faster you shoot, the more AoE damage you're going to do. So, maybe consider gearing towards that particular skill tree 
to some, you might see higher damage output, or maybe not. Number 5. Full DPS or tanky DPS. So obviously with full DPS, you're going to dish out a lot of damage, but be squishy in some cases. Whereas tanky DPS, well, you know, you'll be tanky, but have a lesser DPS um, output in place of defensive stats and gems. Now, fully understand this, there really isn't a happy medium for tanky DPS, with the exception of Revenant, or if you're playing strictly for arenas. Tanky DPS doesn't exist, and this is true for all classes, not just mages. In open world PvP, being a tanky DPS means you're just a nuisance and you won't dish out meaningful damage. Many veteran players will just ignore you and kill off your entire team while leaving you to be the last one to die. In my honest opinion, Revenant being one of the few exceptions with a meaningful impact is probably the only tanky DPS mage you should play if you're considering it. Now there's many cheesy clashes you can play, but think about the number two considerations that we previously talked about. So before you flame me about tanky DPS mages, the only reason why I think Revenant is such a good tanky DPS class is because it has a strong kit that playing any other mage tanky DPS class isn't worth it. You get the damage and CC from sorcery, you get the sustainability and mobility from Aramancy, and on top of that, you get decent CC with occultism. So let that sink in. Number 6. Eranor, Haram, Library, or a mix? So this has been the most frequent and hardest question to answer, but keep in mind the first and second consideration, and the consideration of what kind of player you are as well. Are you a Legacy or Unchained player? In Legacy, it's hard to get Aranor, but it's not completely out of reach. In Unchained, it's going to be a while before you see the first Aranor piece crafted. I say give it about 4-6 to six months with those who are crafting it to make gold. Will it be worth an Unchained? Maybe. But in Unchained, people are going to be so heavily invested in Haram or Missong slash library pieces that going Aranor is virtually useless. Unless there's a well that's coming to play 6 to a year from now that wants Aranor. If you look at all the Korean players and their theory crafting, a lot of players are either full Haram, full library, or a mixture of library and Haram pieces, right? Usually it's about 3 piece library, 4 piece Haram. Understand your play style and your role. You either might want to mix and match peaches to give you the most unfair advantage over others, or crash and burn because your build didn't work. Um, there isn't really a right answer to a particular build, but there is definitely a wrong answer. So let's break down the gear to get an easier understanding. Starting out first, we have Aranor. Just know that this is, quote, the best gear that you can have. Um, in terms of DPS and defensive stats and Aranor specific Lunar Stones. At tier 2, each of these Aranor pieces have 4 selective bonus stats along with the addition of Aranor specific Lunar Stone sets. Um, gear progression depends on how much gold you are willing to spend and the abundance of the same grade I Knight equipment in the auction house and some world boss speeds. Next, Haram. This is what I call the poor man's Aranor. It has a decent DPS and defensive stats, and at tier 3 and tier 4, um, it's pretty competitive against Aranor. Uh, just understand that tier 4 Mythic has the same bonus stat numbers as tier 3 Epic. The downside to Haram is that it can be crystallized between Awakening um, and the getting the desirable stats is all RNG and it's time consuming and labor intensive because you have three selected bonus stats but it's easily upgradable through dailies and farming. Gear progression for Haram is all based on how much time you want to invest. And lastly, library. This is glass canyon gear with almost virtually no defensive amplifier and by that I mean, you don't get any damage reduction stats as you do with Aaron or Haram. And at grade for grade, you'll have about 2k less resilience than Haram. But the nice thing about library is, with each piece's 
base stat, you're always given stamina along with your defenses and main stats. So you'll be a little more tankier than Haram in terms of health. Um, the nice thing about Library is the set bonuses stats that it gives. It varies with the different types of armor sets and in 6.0 we'll be seeing the tier 2 library with small increases in armor stats as well as library specific lunar stones that gives you additional bonus stats just like the Aaron or lunar stones. Um, the gear progression for this set costs a lot of raw gold and labor but to feed it you can easily do dungeons like Miss Song or Library or Noriette or even do faction specific dailies like Grim Ghost and Crimson Rift or do Fall Haram and Golden Plains. All of these gives you enhancers to upgrade your pieces. The experience required to upgrade may seem a little high but it's easily doable. One of the unspoken facts about Library is that when you awaken Library you might want to consider awakening it at an Eternal. When you awaken it at the highest grade It'll drop down to tier 2 legendary with about 90% experience already fed into it. But will retain all of the previous gems and gem slots from the eternal grade. So what's the best gear? Truthfully, I don't know. Theorycraft and find out what you think is suitable for your playstyle and role. Well guys, this is it for the video. I hope you've enjoyed this informational content. And if you like this kind of stuff, be sure to let me know in the comments down below or on my Discord. Although I won't have a lot of time like I used to, I'll be sure to try to answer your guys' questions uh, the best I can. And until next time, don't let me freecast.